Howdy folks, doing a repair to uh, the FR Sky Horus here today and I thought a few people might be interested in what I have to do to it, why it happened and a mistake to avoid that obviously caused this in the first place. A couple weeks back I had scratched my display pretty badly on a uh, carbon fiber tail fin. You know, the one nice thing with uh, FR Sky stuff is you can buy replacement parts for them. So I looked online thinking oh, I'll just get a new display, didn't think they'd be that much. They're almost $100 US, so that was a deal breaker there just for a scratch display. So once I took it out, noticed that it had this um, film on it. Just this plastic film stuck to the display. And I just thought, oh, it's a protective film, I can remove it. But after I took it off and refit the screen you turn me on. completely white Normal mode. and Throttle as most people mode. already have Better figured mode. out yeah I removed the polarizing film and the way LCD displays work is there's two polar two layers of polarization and depending on how the pixel is shifted will determine what color light comes through the two layers and when one is removed all the all the pixels are lit up evenly so all the colors are coming out at one time which creates the color white. So you have to have these polarizing films on and I just thought well you could order a polarizing film but you don't really know what angle these screens are polarized at. I was guessing 45 degrees because when you wear your polarized sunglasses uh, as long as your head is level or your glasses are level colors come through if you tilt your head to the side 45 degrees one way or the other the display goes blank. That's the reason most of these screens are going to be polarized at a 45 degree angle. And you have to get the right angle of polarization when you order your film because it completely changes what colors are transmitted. Everything from the correct to negative. That's pretty neat. So I decided to get a Flash Photonics their PFHC film, polarizing film. This is not the glossy, like what was on there. This is a uh, anti-glare film, costs a little bit more, and it's also scratch resistant. So that's why I chose it. Uh, that was the one thing I don't like about the uh, Horus display, is it is very shiny in bright sunlight, you get a lot of glare. So I'm kind of hoping that this uh, anti-reflective film is a little bit better in that respect. Oh, no matter which way I put this film that they sent me, it looks horrible. But there are protective coatings on, or yeah, protective film on here. And there's the sticky side on the back. So yeah, you have to get adhesive backed film if you ever want to change yours because you scratched it. And there you can see there's the right color there. So we can't put it on this way. We have to angle it at exactly 45 degree angle. This is a 45 degree angle. I've roughly drawn the outline of what these are. I can fit three on this 10 by six sheet. And I'm just going to uh, cut them out roughly first, going by the grid lines that are at a 45 degree to the cut angle of the sheet. And I can get three out of here. But before I do the final cut, I'm actually going to open the radio up and remove the display so we can get the exact right size. There's just six screws on the back, two at the bottom, two kind of in the middle and two at the top. They're Phillips. And the other thing I like taking out right now is the external uh, antenna jack because if you don't take this out, then you have to unplug the little UFL connector inside and those have a finite cycle life on them so you don't want to be unplugging them all the time. So that's why I remove this this way and then I don't have to unplug it. Okay, just make sure all the six screws are accounted for here. As you see I just have a T-Rex assembly mat so just something soft so nothing gets scratched and then this should just pop off. There we go. Now on the inside there's a couple of connectors, three I believe, that you have to take out. Two for the rotary dials at the back here and then one below for the vibration motor. 
So I'm just going to uh, do that real quick. You can get in there with uh, pliers, but I'm just going to pull them out by hand. Not the best way to do it. And then there's that external antenna that we can just pull out. And then we will just flip the back half over, like so. Now you are going to have to take the GPS antenna UFL connector off. So these just pop out. Just pull it straight off. And we can get rid of that. Now I'm just going to zoom in here to the upper circuit board because we have to remove this. So first thing we've got to do is lift up the little ribbon cable hold down. And we can pull this ribbon cable out of that board. Just get him out of the way. Pull this five conductor connector out. Or sorry, four conductor. This is the antenna lead for the internal antenna. I believe this is the Bluetooth on this side. But anyways, let's uh, take this out. There's just four Phillips screws holding it in. Now on the back side of this board, this is hard to see, there's the ribbon cable for the display. And we should probably take the battery out. There we go. And the cable will slide out. Okay, so we can take this board out. Now with that out of the way, we can hopefully get the display out. So there's this display holder on the back. It's just this big plastic, essentially a tray. Again, four Phillips screws holding it in. These screws that hold that plastic tray in are slightly longer than the ones that held the circuit board in, so don't get them mixed up. Very careful pulling this out. Make sure you're not snagging any cables. And then the display should just pop out. The display has got this little silicone gasket around it. So just be aware of that when you put it back together. And then here is the display itself. So they're made by um, Empire Displays, pretty popular display manufacturer. Um, I looked that number up online, can't find it. I thought maybe you could just order it direct from them if you ever had to buy a display and bypass uh, FR Sky completely, but you can't. At least I couldn't uh, figure out where to get it from. And this display is probably identical to the one used in the X10 other than the cable routing out of it. So we're going to go 99. Ooh, almost 56.84. Okay, so I've cut my uh, polarizing film. The protective coatings are still on the front and back. And I've only cut the one just in case I screwed something up. Got the other two cutouts roughly positioned on the film if I have to use them. And once I know this one works, then I will cut these guys out. And I've spent probably 10 minutes cleaning this display. First with some isopropyl alcohol, and then with some lens cleaner, clean microfiber uh, top cloths, and then blew it off. And again, cleanliness is absolutely um, critical here. Also had a razor blade. There was a couple of little pieces of, I don't know if it was old adhesive from the other film that I had to carefully uh, remove with this. But, um, you know, I've looked through it with my magnifying lamp and it is spotless. But you can see even there, just a dust, just a little bit of dust fell on it right there. So 
you know, really clean room environment would be ideal, but we don't have that. I am going to put a little bit of tape on here to position it. And hopefully this will work. So I'm just going to drop it into the display here and use the tape to hold it. I'll just wrap that around the back. Just some masking tape, nothing too aggressive. Cleanliness is critical, so we're going to get the air out again. Just give it a final clean off. And you get a piece of dust under there and it's game over. Come on. Okay, I might have already screwed this piece up, but we'll try it. So, just pushing it down, and give this a quick blow again. Moment of truth, let's see what it looks like. Uh, I'll take this off first. So we'll probably come out with so I think I got it not bad but there is a little dust spot just under there yeah cleanliness so important even taking all those precautions somehow a little dust speck still got under it got the screen back in got the board on just have the one screw holding it in uh, fitting that ribbon cable from the display to this board. Not exactly the easiest thing. So I haven't put it back together yet completely just in case it doesn't work, but let's see what happens here. So no more glare off the screen. That little dust spot is bothering me though. It's bugging me, but let's see what happens. Huh. You turn me on. So that's good to see. Normal mode, throttle hold. Low Colors lights, look good, not nearly as much glare, but even when it's lit up, that little dust spot, it's uh, showing. I don't know if you can see it. There's so much flicker because the frame rate of the camera is matching the refresh rate of the display, but yeah, there's that little spot there. So, uh, do I try it? I've got two more left on that sheet. Uh, I don't know. I'm happy the OCD got the better of me. I did a second attempt at a second uh, piece of polarizing film and it turned out way better. Don't have any dust in there. Um, pretty much perfect. And the trick there was devoting 100% of your focus to the task. You know, I wasn't worrying about filming, keeping it in frame, whatever. And I didn't overthink the application this time. You know, isn't that the way it goes? When you overthink something, it just makes the task sometimes more complicated and harder. I just used the tape again and just used my finger and worked. Worked my way down the screen as I had done before and just kept blowing air every now and then to keep any dust particles from settling and it worked perfect. And we'll just turn it on here so we can see what it looks like. Mm, you turn me on. And really Normal like the anti-glare coating. Low rates, better low. It's not sunny out today, but I can't wait to take it out in the sunlight to see how it uh, how it looks. But uh, very happy with it. Not saying everyone will like the anti-glare coating if you decide to try this yourself, but uh, I'm I'm quite happy with it. And the other thing I noticed with it, you know, this isn't a touchscreen display, so you're not rumping your fingers on it. But when you do, it doesn't show fingerprints nearly as bad as the glossy uh, polarizing film did. And as far as how scratch resistant this stuff is. Um, definitely way more scratch resistant than the uh, than the glossy you know I can I can rub on it quite hard just with this blunt end of this these set of tweezers and it's not scratching these scratches the only way I could do it is to get the sharp end you know and even if you're just grazing it with the sharp end it's not scratching 
you have to really press for it to bite, bite in through that uh, anti-scratch coating. So quite impressed with it. If you've got a display and it's scratched and you want to try this yourself, it's not overly difficult. You just have to take your time with it. And you know, the cleaner your environment is, the better it's going to be. You know, we're in a shop garage, so there's dust floating around in here. You know, probably if I had done this somewhere else uh, in the house that's a little bit cleaner, might have had a little bit better luck. But definitely would recommend using you know canned air if you don't have an air compressor, just to blow every little piece of dust off because it's critical that it's absolutely spotless when you put it down. Cheers, folks! Happy dust-free. Polarizing film application.